Welcome to the OSM Hackfest Hack Zero session, recorded for assistance to get the most of the upcoming Hackfest. The first topic we will cover is an introduction to NFV. In NFV, the industry is looking to virtualize network functions that used to run in dedicated appliances. By doing this over commodity hardware and open protocols, operators can make their network more automated and efficient achieving a greater level of independence from hardware vendors and enjoying the cloud advantages in the deployment and operations of their own network services. NFV was born from an idea presented by the biggest operators around the world back in 2012. This led to a huge industry movement, which backed by Etsy, has produced dozens of relevant standard documents to make the concept possible. So, why do we need the standards? As NFV is trying to achieve a unified, generic, and common cloud for operators to launch their network functions, interoperability between VNFs and the different types of telco cloud and network functions management and orchestration platforms must be ensured. This is how the standard NFV architecture looks like, conformed by three layers. The NFV infrastructure, that is the physical environment where virtualization will happen, along with its manager, called the Virtual Infrastructure Manager. The management and orchestration block, focused on the lifecycle management of network services and the virtual network functions that comprise them, and the VNF themselves, a set of virtualized instances, virtual machines or containers, that group to provide a network function. So, the NFPI should just be generic hardware and software that enables virtualization. VNFs, however, mainly data plane ones, may require this hardware to perform strongly by delivering low latency, higher throughput, and so on. So, instead of introducing hardware accelerators that would make it difficult to fulfill the NFB vision of using generic compute nodes, a number of techniques were developed by the industry to get the most of the underlying hardware. These techniques, commonly grouped under the name of Enhanced Platform Awareness, or EPA, implement a better use of resources that allow virtual instances to perform better. The manager of this NFPI is called Virtual Infrastructure Manager, being OpenStack the most popular nowadays. It takes care of virtual machines and all networking, compute, and storage resources around them. Higher in the manual stack, we have the VNF manager, in charge of the life cycle of VNFs. It particularly takes care of day 0, 1, and 2 automation of each VNF, in order to simplify operations and reduce the need for manual interventions in the telco cloud. Even though some VNFs bring its own VNF manager, the general trend is for the menu stack to bring a generic VNF manager with support to adapt to any API that the VNF or its element manager exposes for its management. The higher entity in the menu stack is called the NFV orchestrator, which receives the operators or OSS calls to its catalog of network services and provides a complete lifecycle automation for those services. This element fulfills the NFV vision of abstracting operators from the complexities of operating the underlying infrastructure platforms available at the network. Finally, we have the virtual network functions. Each of them can be a set of virtual machines, containers, or a mix. They provide the function itself and APIs for configuration and monitoring. Optionally, in bigger VNFs, an element manager is present to centralize management calls. The end product that operators consume in NFV platforms are VNF packages, which contain standard VNF descriptors that can be understood by NFV orchestrators. Through these packages, operators are able to build their own network services descriptors that will group different VNFs into actual services. In this section, we will introduce Open Source Mano. 
Open Source Mano is an open source Etsy aligned implementation of the higher levels of the Mano stack, which are the NFB orchestrator and a generic BNF manager with capabilities to provide end to end service automation while abstracting complex infrastructures. It heavily relies in four architectural principles respecting the functions of each layer, providing abstraction of underlying complexities, providing a high-level modularity of its software components, and maintaining a simple yet powerful approach for implementing NFB orchestration. OSM, in summary, aims to minimize integration efforts and achieve so by, first of all, implementing a well-known rich information model that allows for enhanced automation of BNFs, network services, and network slices. Second, it provides a standard but extended northbound interface that lets operators or OSS systems launch network services that are instantiated and then automatically provisioned. Third, it extends the concept of network service beyond the data center and throughout transport domains in order to implement virtual, physical, or hybrid network functions in an end-to-end -end fashion across multiple data centers and including their interconnections. OSM is also capable of managing network slices, either by itself or by integrating its northbound interface to a standalone slice manager. OSM, in summary, provides a platform for end-to-end -end network services orchestration. Through its integration with the Beam layer, including regular Beams and Kubernetes clusters, it can cover the most common networking scenarios. In some cases, the Beam can manage an SDN controller, or if the operators want to maintain the Beam as generic as possible, a straight integration between OSM and an SDN controller can be provided by the SDN Assist feature, where the Beam takes care of the overlay networks while the SDN controller as instructed by OSM, configures the underlay. This diagram summarizes the modular containerized services that OSM runs. A unified message bus provides asynchronous communications between components such as placement, policy manager, and monitoring services. LCM centralizes the orchestration taking care of BNF management and indicators through VCA and virtual resources through the RO. A unified northbound interface makes all services programmatically available directly to external systems or for operators through the OSM CLI or dashboard. A collection of common services also containerized provide databases, storage and authentication functions for the system. But what makes OSM so awesome? Is it its large and diverse community, built by around 140 members and growing? It may also be its well-organized governance, in which leadership and advisory groups are comprised only by operators to maintain the neutrality on the NFB vision that OSM wants to fulfill. Is it the people which bring their vision and expertise in the leadership group? In the technical steering committee? The model development group leadership? The Etsy technical expertise? And end user advisory group and task forces? It may well be because of its prominent features enabled at the most recent release, which include the orchestration of Kubernetes-based microservices that fulfill the 5G needs. Or many other reasons that make OSM the most effective, lean, feature-rich and standards-based open-source NFB orchestrator that just delivers the NFB vision.
In this third section, we will review some of the most important aspects of OpenStack and Kubernetes and its relationship with OSM. Cloud platforms like OpenStack and Kubernetes aim to implement the software-defined data center vision, completely virtualized and easily managed. It's about virtualization of compute, storage, and networking in a programmable fashion that enables hyperscalability, agility, cost reduction, and end-to-end -end automation. Understanding the difference between virtual machines and containers is crucial to gain an understanding of the most recent industry trends. While virtual machines provide a complete isolation between instances, having their own operating systems and libraries, Docker containers, which can run in bare metal or even in virtual machines, take the virtualization efficiency further by sharing a single Linux operating system. This provides agility to start applications, enhanced mobility, improved modularity, and a better use of resources. OpenStack is a successful open source project that lets users build their own private or public clouds by automating the provisioning of compute, networking, and storage resources that virtual instances need, providing self-service, elasticity, telemetry, security, and all the features that any cloud should be able to provide. OpenStack has been widely adopted by network operators that are looking for a unified private cloud environment for their network functions. Even though it is capable of providing containers, it highly specializes in automating the life cycle and resources of virtual machines. Through different software models, it provides all the resources a VM requires, including compute, images, networks, storage, telemetry, security, simple management, and template-based orchestration. It exposes all of these services through a rich REST API, which users can consume directly through a dashboard or CLI. In an NFP world, operators implementing network services do not have time to deal with virtual machines directly. That is where OSM comes into the picture, abstracting the operator from the VM management towards the network service end-to-end -end orchestration. Kubernetes, on the other side, is a container orchestration engine that manages the lifecycle of Docker containers, grouping them together through the concept of pods, which are interconnected by overlay networks. Kubernetes takes care of service provisioning, balancing, protection, restoration, and scaling. Even though it is capable of providing virtual machines, it highly specializes in automating the lifecycle and resources of containers. Like in OpenStack, through different software models, it provides all the resources a pod requires, including compute, images, networks, storage, telemetry, security, simple management, and template-based orchestration. The master nodes expose a rich REST API which users can consume directly through a dashboard or CLI. In a NFP world, and similar to the OpenStack case, operators implementing network services do not have time to deal with containers or even with pods. That is where OSM comes into the picture, abstracting the operator from the pod management towards a network service end-to-end -end orchestration. So even if a network service is comprised of virtual machines, containers, or a mix, OSM takes care of its complete lifecycle. Finally, let's see an overview of the upcoming Hackfest. The agenda, highlighted in purple, is built in the form of hacks and covers hands-on exercises of all the relevant features of OSM. The community leadership and members will meet in parallel to cover roadmap and feature development. On Wednesday, the OSM Ecosystem Day will join the two groups in one single session to present the latest developments of the community. Take a look at these links for extra preparation for the Hackfest. OSM webinar, OSM documentation, and social networks.